Welcome to the QP Buckeye Insider alongside Garrett Searett. I'm Mark Kuntz. As once again, we are in Florida as Ohio State prepares to take on the Clemson Tigers in the Orange Bowl. And Garrett, food poisoning made headlines on Monday, Tuesday. Perhaps fells Ohio State's quarterback, Braxton Miller. Well, they announced that it wasn't food poisoning, that it's a bit of a stomach bug going around, so that's uh, kind of a relief. But uh, they say it's a 24-hour flu, and Braxton Miller's caught it. But uh, hopefully it, it stays at 24 hours and doesn't advance to that stage. They said he's going to practice today, and hopefully that's the case. Yeah, right now it certainly sounds like it's more of a precautionary measure. They held him out of the media availability on a Tuesday morning so he could spend more time with the trainers, but they did fully expect him to practice with the team on a Tuesday as Braxton Miller maybe struggled game down the stretch for Ohio State. Yeah, he was uh, just 8 for 21, I think, in the Big Ten Championship game. And uh, to, to get a win here in the Orange Bowl, he's got to be better than that. And uh, they got a little bit away from giving the ball to Carlos Hyde in the Big Ten Championship game. And I think Tom Herman has realized that and has said, you know, we're going to get back to that uh, here, here in the Orange Bowl. And certainly Braxton Miller didn't make it to New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist, did have a strong sh showing for the second year in a row. And maybe sometimes as an Hawkeye fan, you maybe get a little bit caught up in what the Ohio State offense can't do and forget what they can do. And certainly the Clemson defense is well aware of what they're facing in Braxton Miller in the Ohio State offense. I would say just his overall ability and, and skill to, to run the ball and throw the ball, he's, he's – can, well, with some of the plays we see him make on make on film, it's just unbelievable mm -hmm. to sit there and watch, and you, you rewind it over and over, and you still can't believe it every single time you watch it. So it's a, uh, it's definitely, definitely going to be a great challenge for us, and, and especially considering the offensive line that he has in front of him, they're all, they're all all Americans for the most part. That's what it, that's what it looks like, and they all you rarely see a mental error or, or, or giving up a sack or, or anything like that. So it's it's definitely probably just the overall offense and, and the guys that he ever has around him that, that makes him a lot better. Yeah, it's again, again, he's got a, a, a great blend of, uh, of size and, and uncanny speed. We've seen some athletic quarterbacks this year, but none with the speed that he has. And uh, with his size and strength, he can run through trash because of his strength. Uh, like a running back, he's got eyes in the back of his head. He, he sees guys from all angles. He's just got an uncanny ability in the pocket to feel pressure. And then again, they've got a ton of design quarterback run games. And sometimes one of the worst things you can do is cover the guys down the field because then he's, he's going to pull it down. So I say that in jest, but, uh, you know, he's got a great <coughs> supporting cast on top of, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, great ability. But uh, he's got a huge arm. And uh, so he can throw the ball 60, 65, 70 yards. Uh, you know, without much of an effort. And uh, so uh, those things combined in the style of uh, offense, you know, the systematic, uh, you know, approach that they have, uh, it, it's all centered around that quarterback and that running back uh, to get things going. Well, I know it's just, it's going to take all 11 guys on defense. Um, there's, you get, every time they drop back, you got you to kind of take in consideration him taking off and scrambling. We don't really want to get into details about what exactly we're going to do. Maybe Coach Venable will answer that for you later. But uh, it, it's definitely going to be a challenge. It's going to, definitely going to take the whole defense. Um, like, <clears throat> like you said, it's going to be a challenge. But with me, you know, it all starts in the trenches. So just, so just winning the line of scrimmage. And, um, you know, you say that they're both good runners. But I feel, like, I feel like he's undervalued as a passer as well. So, you know, we're preparing for it all. And um, so we, we got to stop running past with just – Got to, got to get off the field. He's, he's definitely been um, getting on us a little bit more than he is usually than he has usually. Um, he's developed along, you know, side Coach Meyer, Coach Herman. He, he's developed a, a sense of uh, leadership throughout the whole season. You definitely hear his presence more than you have in the past. Um, so I mean, he, he's <clears throat> he's the same person off the field that he was. It, it, cool guy that I know, you know, easy to talk to, um, very humble. Um, but on the field, he's definitely uh, developed a, um, a voice, I guess you could say. He's in the huddle, and although we don't huddle most of the time. <laughs> but, uh, figure of speech. Yeah. Figure of speech. But, uh, yeah, he, he's definitely developed a, a voice on the field throughout the whole season, especially in this bowl practice. I haven't noticed anything different. I mean, um, Braxton prepares the same. He, he's, he's still the same leader uh, at practice. He still works the same at practice. So I, I really haven't noticed anything different. So, I mean, he, he's, been, he's been practicing his butt off this, this, um, this bowl practice. I mean, these bowl practices, he's been practicing really well. So 
um, I'm excited to see him come out and play. Certainly Braxton Miller can beat you with his legs. Over a thousand yard rushing for the second time in the years. There's a handful of Ohio State players who have ever done that. Thousand yard rusher for Carlos Hyde this season as well. Just the second time the Buckets had two thousand yard rushers, and Carlos Hyde is a man who really, once he came back from his suspension, was a man possessed running the ball. Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know he he got real close to a thousand yards last year, and I think that was a sense of pride for him this year. Is that he, he wanted to get to be that first thousand yard back for Urban Meyer, and and he was able to accomplish that. And you're right, Mark. He just he. he he came back with a purpose, and he ran with a purpose, and he just wanted to show everybody in the country that, you know, I made this mistake, and I want to prove to you that I'm not who that mistake was. And, and just as a football player, it was just incredibly impressive. You know, Jordan Hall was really great those first three games, and he kind of disappeared throughout the rest yeah. of the season because Carlos Hyde just played so well, and he didn't give Tom Herman and Urban Meyer a reason to, to take him out. Later on this week, we'll talk to uh, Carlos Hyde about how his faith helps sustain him through that suspension. As he once he realized he was going to miss some games, he readjusted his goal. Said, "I want to become the first Heisman Trophy winner to win it missing three games." Fell a little bit short, but he still thought he had quite a season in concerns to the Heisman Trophy. Now I see now if I had those three games, yeah, I mean, you know, they, <clears throat> you know, it, it hurts, but it's all good. It hurt hard to see how it wins them, but. Yeah. yeah, I probably would have got it. <laughs> 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 You're going to run for how many yards? <laughs> I mean, it's no telling. Um, what I got, probably, I think I would have got close to 2,000. Yeah, that's huge at all State, so. I think, uh, you know, the challenges he faced and the, the way he overcame them you know, speaks a lot to who he is. And, uh, you know, he didn't sulk. And, uh, you know, anytime he was around us, he was positive and Obviously, when he came back, he ran with a lot of passion, ran hard, and you know made us to look good. So, um, you know, we're proud of him for the way he responded, and he's had a tremendous year. And uh, you know, obviously, we have one more game to prove, you know, that he is the best running back in the country. And I think that's the way we both feel up here. So, um, you know, very proud of him. Like we said, that the, the way he overcame those struggles, play hard. Uh, you know, the, that your your team needs you to go down to the scout team for uh, for those three weeks and prove to them that, that you're uh, a team player and that you care about them more than you care about yourself. And uh, I don't know if it was me. I mean, I think that message was was relayed to him uh, through a number of different, different sources. So, um, but that certainly was probably the biggest one was go out and practice your, your tail off and um, make sure that your, your teammates understand that they're more important to you than, than even you yourself. You need to take a time out in this QP Buckeye Insider from South Florida and we come back much more on the offensive side of things as the Buckeyes and Tigers get ready for Friday's Orange Bowl.